So today we'll be doing a detailed comparison of two cylinder heads an economy cylinder head and a performance oriented cylinder head. Both of our heads come from the same engine family, from Toyota's 4A engine family. And the two engines where these two heads come from share the same displacement and an almost identical cylinder block design. Which means that the key difference between the two engines lies in the heads, making this a great example to demonstrate how cylinder head design can influence and define the character of an engine as well as its performance, efficiency and more. Our performance performance cylinder head comes from Toyota's pretty famous and high revving 4A GE engine, while our economy head comes from its modest counterpart, the second generation of the 4A FE engine. Today we'll be exploring in detail the differences between these two heads, paying special attention to the valve included angle to see how this feature can define a cylinder head. Also we'll be comparing some of the design elements of these two heads with more modern designs to see how things evolved in the past decades. Now let's start with basic anatomy. As you can see, both of these cylinder heads are DOHC, or double overhead camshaft designs, meaning that they each feature two camshafts sitting above the valves. One camshaft operates eight intake, and the other camshaft operates eight exhaust valves. Both engines have a total of 16 valves. Although they feature the same number of camshafts and the same number of valves, there's an important difference in how the camshafts are driven. In our economy cylinder head, only the exhaust camshaft is directly driven by the belt. This is different to our performance head, where both camshafts are directly driven by the belt. Now, when both engines are fully stock, this really doesn't influence anything significantly. And although the gear drive in the economy head uh, may have slightly more frictional losses, maybe, and weigh a bit more, in reality, this is negligible and almost impossible to feel or measure in the real world. But our performance cylinder head has an important advantage when it comes to tuning. Because it has two cam gears, you can install aftermarket adjustable cam gears to both the intake and the exhaust. And this gives you the opportunity to independently adjust camshaft timing or retard or advance camshaft timing independently for the intake and the exhaust. And this can be very beneficial in some cases and it gives you more flexibility in tuning your power and torque curves. On the other hand, our economy cylinder head has only one cam gear, which means you can only install one adjustable cam gear uh, on the exhaust camshaft. And even if you did that, it really doesn't give you a lot of flexibility because the two camshafts are mechanically linked by scissor gears. So when you advance or retard camshaft timing on the exhaust camshaft, you're doing the exact opposite by the same amount on the intake camshaft, which in the end results in less tuning flexibility and less tuning potential. As you can see, both of our cylinder heads feature pretty much the same valve actuation and return mechanism that's known as a shim over bucket system. The camshaft acts directly on top of the bucket, compressing the spring and opening the valve. As the camshaft hole lifts off the shim, the spring under the bucket returns the valve back to its seat. This is a fully mechanical system and the shims on top of the valves have the key task of maintaining proper valve clearance or valve lash. Unlike hydraulic valve lifters, this is not a maintenance-free system and valve lash in both of these engines must be periodically checked and adjusted. Adjustments are made by removing the shim from the top of the bucket and replacing it with a suitable sized shim to obtain the desired valve clearance. The benefit of the system is that the shims can be replaced without removing the camshafts making maintenance relatively easy. Now the main benefits of the shim over bucket system are that it's compact, easy to maintain and that it has very few moving parts, which means that it's lightweight and it doesn't produce a lot of friction. The shim over bucket system has been a staple of many Toyota engine designs over the years. But it does have some important disadvantages, especially when it comes to the performance. Running very high lift, high duration camshafts on this valve train actually risks the cam lobe completely popping the shim off the bucket at high RPMs which can potentially wreak havoc under your cam covers. Now this isn't something you have to worry about on a rocker based valve train and this explains why Toyota decided to use a rocker based valve train on its more modern performance oriented high revving 2ZZ. 
GE engine. You're also going to find a rocker based valve trains on many other modern high revving high performance engines such as the Honda K20 for example. All of these engines use variable valve lift and camshaft duration and have very aggressive cam specs on their high duration high lift lobes. In contrast to this, most shimover bucket heads are forced to run relatively modest cam specs. Another reason behind the modest cam specs in both of these engines is that they are pretty old designs and neither feature any sort of variable valve timing. The valve lift, camshaft duration and cam timing remain constant throughout the entire RPM range, which is why the cams in these engines must strike a balance or a compromise between low RPM and high RPM operation. Too much lift and too much duration would cause an unstable idle and poor performance at low RPM. On the other hand, too little lift and too little duration would rob the engine of its power potential at high RPMs. Most modern engine designs feature different variable valve timing technologies, which gives the engine different cam profiles for different RPM ranges and different engine loads, which is infinitely superior to a fixed uh, valve timing system uh, that can be seen in these engines. When they want to run very aggressive camshaft specs on an engine with a shim over bucket system, many engine builders will choose to convert to a shim under bucket system. This is something that you can very often see on motorcycle engines that rev very high. Now a shim under bucket system makes it impossible to adjust valve currents without removing the camshafts, but the benefit is that it completely eliminates the possibility of the shim popping away from the bucket. As we said, both of our heads have 16 valves in total, which means we have four valves in each combustion chamber. And this has been the norm when it comes to four cylinder overhead cam engines manufactured in the past 30 years or so. Four valves in each combustion chamber result in a large surface area for the valves, allowing the engine to breathe as much air as possible at any given time. Now let's take the valves out and take a closer look at them. Here we can see all the components of the shim over bucket system. And again, as we said, it's a pretty compact system without too many moving parts. When it comes to valve sizes, both engines feature pretty decent valve sizes for their displacement. And it's interesting to note that the economy and the performance engines share almost the exact intake and exhaust valve diameters. But we must remember that we're looking at the second generation 4AFE engine here. Our 4AFE head comes from 1994, while our 4AGE head comes from 1987. So there's seven years between these two engines, and it's interesting to observe how far cylinder head design has progressed in just seven years. And because of this age difference, our economy head, as you'll see in the rest of the video, is actually able to stand toe to toe with our performance head in many different areas. In fact, the previous generation of the 4AFE engine, the first generation, did feature smaller valve sizes than our performance cylinder head. Both engines feature almost the same physical dimensions of their valve springs. However, the 4AGE engine revs much higher and it must prevent valve fault at these high RPMs, which is why it of course features much stiffer, harder springs. Also, the diameter of the spring wire in the 4AGE engine is thicker and the springs simply feel much more difficult to compress than the 4AFE springs. It's also interesting to observe that the 4AFE buckets are actually a bit larger larger, which ultimately gives a bit more room for cam duration and lift. But the key difference between these two engines isn't in the valves themselves or their sizes, it's actually in the valve included angle. The valve included angle is the angle of the intake and the exhaust valves against the cylinder head's center line. The 4AGE features a wide valve included angle, while the 4AFE features a more narrow valve included angle. We can visually best see the difference between these two valve included angles if we pop the valves into the head the wrong way in. 
A wide valve encoded angle in theory favors something known as the scavenging effect. Now, during the exhaust stroke in a four-stroke engine, something known as valve overlap occurs. Valve overlap is when both the exhaust and the intake valves are open at the same time. During this time, exhaust gases are rapidly escaping from the combustion chamber. As they do this, they create a high-speed pulse of exhaust gases that is rapidly moving down the exhaust manifold. As it does this, this high-speed pulse creates an area of high pressure in front of it and an area of low pressure behind it. The low pressure behind the high-speed exhaust pulse creates a sucking effect, or a vacuum. During valve overlap, the vacuum pulls out more burnt exhaust gases, but it also helps pull in more fresh air. It helps the engine by speeding up the entry of the intake gases and the exit of the exhaust gases. As the RPMs increase, the air flows faster and the scavenging effect is especially pronounced and important for making more power at higher RPM. A wider valve encoded angle in theory helps promote the scavenging effect. It creates a direct, a simple path for the air between the intake and the exhaust valves. It makes it easier for the intake gases to enter and it also makes it easier for the exhaust gases to exit. Most importantly, it makes the interaction between these two gases easier during valve overlap. It almost helps the intake gases sort of push out the exhaust gases, which in theory increases the benefits of the scavenging effect. In in contrast to this, a narrow valve encoded angle requires the gases to make greater changes in the direction of their flow, which reduces the benefits of the scavenging effect. But a wide valve encoded angle also has a downside. And the downside is that it negatively impacts the shape of the ports, especially the intake ports of a cylinder head. An optimal intake port should have the least restrictive, the simplest, most direct path for the intake air to flow onto the intake valves. And as you can see here, a wide valve encoded angle actually forces the intake ports to bend more, to be more curved, to accommodate this particular valve angle geometry. Compared to this, a narrow valve encoded angle lets you have an intake port that can be angled upwards, which can result in a less restrictive, a more direct path for the air onto the intake valves. You can observe the effects of the different valve encoded angles between our two cylinder heads by simply looking through the intake ports. As you can see in the case of our economy head, the path for the intake air is much simpler, much more direct, much more straight, and you can observe almost the entire intake valve hole when looking straight through the intake port. This definitely isn't the case when it comes to our performance head. So does this mean that the economy head is actually better in this regard than the performance head? Well, yes, it does. And the reason behind it is the seven years of difference between these two heads that we mentioned earlier. The more modern engine actually incorporated a more modern narrow valve encoded angle. If you look at other more modern engine designs, you will see that the majority actually employ a pretty narrow valve encoded angle. And this is because a narrow valve encoded angle, in addition to allowing better design of the intake port shapes, also improves combustion efficiency. A narrow valve encoded angle promotes greater tumbling of the air inside the combustion chamber. More tumbling means better mixing of the air and fuel, which allows the engine to squeeze more energy out of the fuel, resulting in greater combustion efficiency. And as we know, efficiency is extremely important for modern engines. On top of this, modern engines do not have to rely on a wide valve encoded angle to improve their scavenging effect, because they have variable valve timing and cam phasing, they can have more valve lift, greater duration of the lift, as well as more valve overlap at high RPMs and high engine loads to maximize scavenging when it's actually needed. Something else that the valve encoded angle can also influence is the physical dimensions of a cylinder head. As a general rule of thumb and with all other things being equal, a wide valve encoded angle head is going to be physically wider too. And a narrow valve encoded angle head, although that's not the case right here, is often going to be physically taller than a comparable wide valve encoded angle head. So this means that our 4AFE uh, cylinder head is actually narrower, which is a good thing for performance because it can give you more space for exhaust manifolds and intake manifolds. And if you ever come to the crazy idea of turbocharging a 4AFE cylinder head, uh, the narrower size of the head is going to give you more space for a turbo manifold. But it's important to understand that the narrow valve encoded angle that we can see on the 4AFE head 
wasn't there with the intent of performance. The goal was economy. Toyota, of course, wasn't trying to secretly make their economy engine into a performer. The narrow valve encoded angle is there to improve the tumbling of air to make the engine more efficient. We can see that the tumbling of air was the main goal if we take a closer look at the combustion chambers of these two engines. The combustion chamber in our performance cylinder head is a typical Pentroof combustion chamber design, meaning that it has a spark plug in the middle. It's a design staple of the vast majority of performance-oriented dual overhead cam engines and it is a good design. As you can see, when the valve opens, the area around the valve is for the most part free of any obstructions. This allows for the air to freely flow and this promotes better airflow, better cylinder filling and it enables the engine to breathe better and perform better, especially at high RPM where greater quantities of air are needed. But when we look at the combustion chamber of the 4 AFE engine, it becomes pretty obvious that Toyota wasn't trying to design a performer. As you can see, almost as much as 50% of the valve area is actually shrouded and the valves are set deep inside the combustion chamber. It's obvious that the goal here again was to tumble the air against the walls of the combustion chamber as much as possible, again with the same end goal of maximizing homogenization for better combustion efficiency. The 4 AFE engine doesn't rev very high at all, which is why high airflow that would be needed at high RPMs was sacrificed in favor of combustion efficiency and economy. Now let's switch over to the intake ports of our two cylinder heads. And as we can see, there's a big difference in size or cross section of the intake ports in our economy and our performance cylinder head. And this makes sense, of course, our performance engine revs much higher, which is why it needs more air quantity at these high RPMs to make power. A greater intake port cross section provides, of course, a greater air quantity. But air quantity is just one part of the intake air equation. The other part of the equation is air velocity. And as a general rule of thumb, more air quantity means more power, but more air velocity means more torque. Unfortunately, air quantity and air velocity stand at opposition to each other. When you increase the cross section of an intake port, you increase the quantity of the air coming in, but at the same time, you reduce the velocity of that air. So the 4AGE needs a lot of air quantity because it revs high, but the 4AFE prioritizes economy, which is why it chose to reduce the cross section of the port to increase the air velocity to have more torque, especially at low and mid RPMs, which allows you to cruise with a less throttle, which means better fuel efficiency. But the very large intake ports of the 4AGE have a downside. As we said, they reduce air velocity, which means less torque at low and mid RPMs, which negatively impacts drivability and engine feel. So to improve torque at low RPMs, the 4AGE, or at least the early versions of this engine, had this thing. And this thing is the T-VIS, or Toyota Variable Induction System. And what it does is that it closes off half of the intake port at the low RPMs to reduce the cross section with the goal of improving air velocity and torque at the low and mid RPMs. At high RPMs, it opens up all the butterfly valves for maximum air quantity. But this was a pretty primitive system and as you can see it's kind of restrictive for airflow and subsequent generations of the 4AGE actually completely abandoned the TVIS in favor of smaller intake port cross sections. More modern engines actually employ a more efficient and less restrictive system in the form of a variable length intake manifold. Now let's take a look at the exhaust ports. Both heads feature round exhaust ports with nearly identical cross sections. However, the performance head is at an advantage here because exhaust ports can't be angled upwards. So the wide valve angle actually results in a more straight exhaust port shape in the performance head. On top of this, the overall shape as well as the length uniformity is better in the performance head, resulting in improved and less restrictive exhaust flow, which of course positively impacts performance. And there you have it, we have covered the key design elements of two different cylinder heads. We have compared them with more modern designs and we have seen how they influence power, torque and efficiency. I hope this video helps you better understand the logic behind certain cylinder head design elements and how they ultimately impact the character of an engine. As always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be seeing you soon with more fun and useful stuff on the D4A channel.